production is hard. And the biggest issue when starting a production line is quality control. And even more important than the quality control is the tracking of the quality control. Because without data, you have no way of solving any of the problems in your processes. Now normally, you'd have something called an ERP system that takes care of all this. But ERP systems are usually custom code and cost a lot of money. And while that's in process, I decided to learn how to make my own ERP system last night. And it's pretty good. So let me show you how it works. You got this barcode scanner. And you open up this, this Python program. And it connects to a Google Sheet. And you can actually update all the stuff to update the program in the Google Sheet, which means our production manager and our QC guy can go in, add new stations, add new failure mechanisms, add new part numbers, and the program just keeps on ticking because it's actually using the variables from this. And I know what a lot of people will say, you can't vibe code something for production, but you can if you have the level of OCD that I do. Step one, let's say we are inspecting parts. So this is a front scale. This is a rear scale. So I've picked this part up and I'm going to inspect it. I'm gonna see if there's any scratches, blemishes, machining marks, etc. And I'm gonna see what revision number it actually is. And this is revision number six. So it's already getting pretty old. So we scan revision number six, okay? Now the program tells me, scan your failure mode or your pass. So let's say, looks good. I scan, pass, okay? Now, I'm gonna inspect this guy, which is revision number eight, and I scan that. Quality control checked by Corey, because I left it on Corey's name. It includes the date, the quantity checked, and if it passed. Because we're gonna scan a whole bunch of these and test a bunch of them. So we need a way of keeping track of how many did we inspect and how many failures did we find because we don't want to just stop at the first failure, we want to inspect this for every possible failure. For example, I get into this one, and let's say it's got some visible scratches. Um, the lock bar doesn't even exist. It wasn't bead blasted. Um, it was anodized, so that's good. It's missing magnets. There's all these things around it. The system waits for you to either scan another part or another product. So I'll switch to product. But we'll see this whole row gets populated. So the rear scale, I only checked one, but it had visible scratches, lock bar not bent, bad bead blasting, everything gets populated into here. And the beauty is we can automatically have a graph appear live as we're doing this. And you notice there's also the date. So it keeps track of this part number for this date by Corey and it keeps that all in one line. If I scan my name now, and I scan the same one, number six, and I say that one's good, and then we move on to that, you'll see that it popped up with my name now and the date that I passed it. So it keeps it all separate based on who's scanning, and it also does it by date. And if you're inspecting parts from yesterday, guess what? You can choose yesterday, and once again, it will automatically fill in a new row adjusted for the date in order for you. Too much info? Probably. I scanned this order number. Now we're looking at this screen. So this is the assembly QC checks. We were doing individual part QC checks. I've scanned my, my build card and I have a knife that's some level of assembled. Let's say I'm at step one, I'm gonna check for these things. So I scan the station I'm at and I check for those things. Let's say it's good, pass, great. Now, the next time this gets scanned, I'm at a new station. Station two, tumbling. Let's say it failed, okay? B blasting, pass. And you can see, order number 56315, station one, passed. Station two, failed with code five. Code five is the failure mode, which is lock bar not bent, but at B blasting, it passed and checked by me on that date. How do we rework a part? Let's say it's green, 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 and one red. We've scanned this again, but this time, we're gonna scan rework. And now, which station? Tumbling? 
So we go to tumbling, and let's say we fix the problem and scan pass. So I could have had it just overwrite what failed, but instead I appended reworked. That way we have the data tracking to know out of this order, where did it fail and why? And then when we rework the order, we can reconfirm that everything has passed. So now if I scan um, station one, which should also pass because it was fine before. Okay, that's supposed to go there. I'll fix that. There's some bugs. <laughs> so, one bug, one bug, that's it. We're gonna make this look a bit nicer and we're also gonna color code things and differentiate the types of codes. So as you can see right now, we're using QR codes for the product number, which includes the revert revision history. And that's because barcodes, when you get too long, the barcode gets too big or you run out of characters. So we need to use QR codes for something that is gonna continue to change. Then I've split up barcodes and QR codes for the station code versus the failure code. Just so it's an obvious, what am I looking for? I'm looking for the barcode because I'm scanning the station. Or instead of the station, your name. And now you've scanned, I am James and I am the one doing QC right now. Finally, the pass rework, and we also have a new fail. So if there's a fail that we haven't recorded before, you scan this one and QC needs to then add it to the system so we know what new problem we have to solve. So likely, you're gonna carry pass, rework, and new fail with you, possibly on your laptop. You got your screen and you go to the station, you do your QC check, and you approve by doing that. So in the short term, part acceptance is going to go at the station called part acceptance. So that way when you're doing QC, you can scan the wall with the issues that you might find at that station. So let's see it in action. Take your barcode scanner, you got your program open, and we're going to inspect this knife. Step one is to scan into the system. It's already passed the previous two stations, so Green is good. So at this station, we're typically looking for a few things. We're making sure that the bubble level is straight, not crooked, and obviously not missing the D-template because then it wouldn't lock. And then also making sure that we did in fact install the tweezers. It might sound silly that it's just like, make sure you put the part in that's supposed to be in the knife. But the reality with how assembly works is sometimes you just have a brain fart and you miss something which is why in production you need to double and triple check. So let's open it up and take a look. So I can see that the D template is installed. And if I pick this up, the bubble level is straight. And look, there are tweezers. So now what you do is now that this station is passed, I scan the station or here and pass. You can see we've now passed all three stations. What happens if it missed something? So again, we're going to scan it into the system. We're gonna scan the station we're at. Let's pretend there's no detent plate. So I scan missing detent plate. And then from my sheet, I click done. And now if we look over here, we can see this order number past the first two stations and then failed here. So now we're going to fix that. So let's pretend that I've installed the detent plate. So now it's going to pass. So once again, I scan that card, I scan the station, but this time I scan pass. Let's again, just scan done. The important thing here is we're keeping track of all this data. So we can see that it did actually fail for the missing D template, but it's been reworked and now it's passed. Sometimes there might be a case where, oh, it failed for that and it was reworked, it gives you a nice flag to double check that and make sure it was in fact reworked properly. By doing all this, we're able to identify the processes that need extra attention, really make sure that no failures are getting through. Let's hop over to the final station and take a look at a knife just before QC. This is the packaging station and it is the final QC spec inspection upstairs before it comes to final QC. So I'm gonna grab one of these boxes from this shelf and we're gonna scan it in and see what's what. So if you take a look, it's past all the stations we're currently using and it is ready for final inspection. It's time to take all these boxes down to my lab and do that final QC. So let's do that. All right, so production is finally ramping up and I have, I believe, 50 knives 
pass through final two seeds. And hopefully, that means 59s to ship. All right, out of 59s this time, past 42. So the process is definitely improving. Almost forgot to put Bill Carrot in there. As you can see, even I can make a mistake, which is why it is so important that the processes during assembly of a Smith blade are binary. You have to do this and you have to follow these steps because that's the only way you can guarantee over a period of time that the process is done the exact same way. If there's any room to change how you do things, that's where mistakes happen. So, it's a lot of whack-a-mole because basically we're identifying all these little problem points in these processes, but that's how you make a rock solid process. You've got to find every single edge case and you've got to make sure it's impossible to do it wrong. The system's been in use for about a week now and the nice thing is we're starting to get some useful data. And now we can have a dashboard up here so everyone knows where we're at in production and how we're doing. Green means knives that have passed and shipped. Blue is the number of knives that were made that day and yellow is the number of knives currently in progress. Yellow will start to disappear from the graph and eventually it should be blue and green growing. That's what we wanna see up until we hit about 400 new knives a day. So looking at the graph here, you can see on the 16th, I passed about 42 knives, those are the ones in green, and I failed about eight of them, that's the orange. But during that day, we actually built another 50 knives. So that means there's 50 more knives that can become green, I guess today, once they're inspected and passed. Yellow is the number of knives that are currently in progress. So that's actually just looking through all the data and seeing what order numbers have been checked at at least one station and what date was that. So we can see there's a few stragglers that I suspect have gotten lost up here because that knife's been in progress since the 5th and that was two weeks ago. We're gonna have to try and hunt that down. And we've got another system work we're working on for doing that. Once the process is running smoothly, this graph will start to stabilize and you really will just see green, blue, and yellow as it's starting to grow in volume. At some point soon, we're actually going to put a live view of this on Hacksmith.store so you guys can keep track of production as well. Because it's super useful for us and it's also useful for you. Now, assembly has been going a bit slower than we were really hoping. We were really hoping on getting all Founders Knives out by Christmas, but I can already tell that's, that's not happening, so I have to apologize for that. But we will be shipping at least 100, hopefully 200 by Christmas. We've ironed out most of the gremlins in our processes, which means the volume of production is just gonna go up from here. Once we're starting to produce 400 knives a day, we'll be able to get through those Kickstarter orders super fast. So thank you for your patience. They're coming soon.